Hello and welcome back to Nightcap. I'm Josh Rimmer on NextSportsStar.com. Joining us right now on the line from the New York Islanders and the NHLPA Negotiation Committee, Brad Boys. Brad, thanks for taking the time to be with us. Yeah, no problem, Josh. Thanks for having me. Uh, appreciate you coming on uh, with us, Brad. Uh, Got to ask you, what do you think of the uh, the or what did you think when when you first found out about the player owners meeting uh, tomorrow? Uh, think there's any chance that progress can be made in this meeting? Um, I, I had mixed feelings. You know, I think that um, there's definitely a chance. That's why we. I guess we're willing to sit down and, and make that progress, but there were definitely um, stipulations that we wanted to go and we didn't want to go in with the same owners that have been in the meetings before, even though that uh, there are some that in there. Um, you know, we wanted different owners, therefore hopefully to bring different views and a different perspective, uh, which is good. I think it's good for both sides because, um, you know, as most people probably know, there's only... Uh, four or six owners that really know what's going on um, and I have a say in this way, you know, we're opening up more to having uh, more owners getting in the room, talking to guys directly and hopefully voicing their opinion and kind of where they sit and where they want to go. And I think that's something that we, you know, as a, as a union are hoping that's going to happen. That's why we took the meeting. But in saying that too, this could also be uh, one of Gary's um, ploys to, to waste time and uh, just keep pushing it back and saying that uh, the process is getting drawn out and, you know, making uh, some some excuses up, like with the mediator. I think that was that was an, uh, a big waste of time, but uh, who knows? Who knows? I, I, I try to stay optimistic, and I'm trying to do the same way here. Brad Boys joining us uh, from the New York Islanders, uh, again, a member of the negotiation committee. Brad, when this uh, when this was first proposed, uh, doing the player owners only meeting, um, a lot of people thought it was just going to be just the players and the owners. It's come out uh, apparently that Bill Daly's going to be there. Is Steve Fear going to be there as well uh, on, on your guys' side? Uh, it just seems it's not going to be players and owners now. Yeah, apparently not. Um... I'm not sure who's going to go in. I, I just read that, too, that there was going to be uh, somebody from both sides, uh, besides owners and players, that are were going to be in there. And then I read that Bill Daly was going to be there, too. So for us, I, I'm not sure who's going to be, and I assume you know the counterpart would go. But uh, right now, I don't think we know the guys, the players that are going to go in or who else is going to go in. I think we just kind of, um, you know, they're going to decide that tomorrow and then go into the meeting. Uh, that way, gave me to give the NHL a little bit of a heads up before um, beforehand, and, and basically when they decide. But as of now, I haven't heard anything, and like I said before, I don't even know which players are going to go in the meeting. Uh, Brad, uh, do you have any idea how many guys have uh, kind of thrown their hat in there, saying that they'd like to be there? Is there any word on on how many guys have expressed their desire to be there? I know. Uh, Ryan Miller tweeted today that he's gonna he's gonna show up at the meetings. Uh, doesn't know if he'll actually be in on the meetings, but a lot of guys have expressed that they'd like to be there. Any idea how many guys have said they want to be there? Um, I think we last time I'd heard there were about twenty or thirty guys that, that wanted to be in, and uh, I think from our standpoint, we would have accommodated every guy as. As much as we could have in every other meeting, we try to get as many guys in as possible. Um, it's the NHL that always puts restrictions on it, so they're going to come with their restrictions of, of six guys, like the owners have six or ten guys, something like that. Mm. Um, but for what I'm pretty sure they're going to restrict how many guys want to go in, but that's what's going to be tough. You know, we've got uh, 20 or 30 guys that are willing to go, and I know that there are guys that are going to be in New York fly in for that reason, hopefully to get in. But uh, not everyone is going to be in there, which uh, which is unfortunate. But that's the way that uh, the NHL is kind of they've put in their their stipulations on the meetings as well. Now I know that uh, you talked about it off the top. There's four new owners that are going to be involved in the meetings tomorrow, which is good. It, it's good to get new blood in there. Um, has there been any word on if uh, you guys would look at maybe putting some new guys in there as well, or would you uh, do you have kind of 
would you want to stay with the guys that you've had in already? Um, that's tough. I think that that's been talked about. Um, you have to try to, you know, open that up as well. To But I think when it comes to meetings like this and uh, uh, this type of meeting where it's supposed to be a, an across-the-table talk of, you know, what's been going on. I think you want guys in there that know what's going on. You know, again, this is, I don't think Gary Bevan does anything that's not going to be an advantage to him yeah. or to his side. And to put, you know, strategic, um, you know, wealthy businessmen in a meeting with uh, hockey players, you know, I, I think that he sees that as an advantage. And so I think that guys that are going to go in um, are going to be guys that are, are knowledgeable. They're going to be smart guys. Um, I know that they're, um, you know, some of the guys that I've thought about, you know, Ryan Miller's an example. He's a bright guy. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, guys that graduated uh, Ivy League schools uh, that are really bright guys and know what's going on. Um, you know, I don't think they've thrown their hat into. So I think you're going to get a mix of of guys that uh, that really know what's going on and some guys, too, that, um, that brings some weight, that, 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 that pulls some, uh, some power, so to speak, as, a, as, far, as far as names and recognition and star power, too. You know, I think that would be a, a good idea to do. But, again, I don't know who's going to be in there, mm-hmm. or I don't think anybody has, knows who's been decided to go in. And uh, as far as I know, it's going to be tomorrow that the guy's going to decide. But um, I think that's the biggest thing is, is to have guys that know what's going on and that are, that are prepared so that, you know, the owners, especially some of the owners that have been in there before and, and some of the hardliners aren't going to try to uh, pull the wool over our eyes. And two guys uh, that do have star power that, that's come out that they'll be in New York as well. One of them's already, uh, I, I've been told, and, and I know it's been reported, that Crosby is expected to be in that meeting one of the six or ten guys that will be there. Uh, Jonathan Taze has also apparently said that he's planning on going to New York. No word whether or not he'll be in on the meeting. But it'd be kind of interesting, Brad, I think, having if Sid is in fact going to be there, uh, him sitting across the table from his owner in Pittsburgh, uh, I think that would bring a, a different dynamic to the meeting as well. For sure, and I think that was something that um, you know we talked about too, is having owners there with... Uh, um, are guys there that, that their owner is going to be there. You know, a lot of guys have relationships with their ownership. Um, and so to be able to talk across the table face to face with, with the owner that, that, uh, you know, you're, that, that employs you and then, you know, able to chat easier with him and to kind of see what's going on and, and to break it down as opposed to talking to somebody else that you might not be comfortable with or somebody that, uh, you don't know at all. So I think that that part is going to be, is going to be good and a very, very favorable for both sides when it comes to having dialogue with uh, guys that are familiar with each other, such as Sid and, and, uh, and the guy in Pittsburgh, the ownership there. And I think that uh, that's going to be good. You know, and that's what we want. We want that type of dialogue and that, that type of relationship to be in there so we can go forward and get our message across and that the owners really know what's going on and not uh, as opposed to kind of the way it's been. And, um, you know, only some of them are, uh, are allowed to know what's going on. Brad, I'm guessing you're you're not going to New York tomorrow. No, I had, uh, I thought about decided uh, to stay back. Um, got some things around the Toronto area that I need to I need to do, but uh, it definitely crossed my mind. I would love to have been there, and you know, if I knew for sure I was going into those meetings, uh, I probably would have been there. But um, with that uncertainty, um, I think it's better for me just to kind of hang around. But I will be. Hopefully updated and uh, kind of find out what's going on when when everything comes out, as uh, as I'm sure we all will be uh, notified of, of kind of how the meetings went. Brad, uh, there's been a report tonight uh, earlier, a couple hours ago. Steve Burton, who's a, a broadcaster uh, anchor on WBZ in Boston uh, TV, uh, reported that you guys will announce an agreement tomorrow or Wednesday. Uh, when I saw this, it was I, I kind of was taken back from it because of uh, you know everything going on right now. Uh, have you heard about this report at all? Um, I no, I, I hadn't. Um, I, I just oh, I just heard very recently about it, and it's uh, I don't know. When I heard, I almost 
you know, wanted to laugh. Yeah, um, I did. Maybe that is the case, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people did too. But um, I, I mean, it's nice to hear something positive. I mean, it's a is a it'd be a positive thing, you know, something like this coming out. But uh, I I just don't see it personally right now. No, and I think that the way that the process goes, if they're going to announce a deal. Um, the process has to, there needs a lot more hoops to kind of go through than, than just announce it. And we haven't heard anything as far as our side. You know, maybe there is something that they're willing to propose or willing to come to and, and believe that they have an agreement based on certain things. But from what I understand, it's it's been, uh, you know, we're not that close. I think the, the league has been still pretty stubborn on, on some of the things that they want and uh, the one they, that they want to take. And, um so as far as that, and as far as I know, in that aspect, I think it's uh, it's very highly unlikely that a deal has been agreed on tomorrow. So, um, but you know, who knows? Crazy things could happen. But you know, we need to have a call. We need to have a talk about it. Have a vote on it. And there's lots of things that need to happen before it just gets uh, agreed on. Brad Boys joining us for the New York Islanders, also a member of the negotiation committee. For the NHLPA, Brad, are you surprised that we're still not playing hockey at this point? Uh, did you envision this going on as long as it has? Uh, I, I am surprised. You know, I I really didn't think it was going to go this long. Again, I'm going to try to be optimistic as much as I can. I've been to the meetings and um, trying to be informed as much as possible from what I had, had understood and then things that I'd heard. I would have assumed that we would have been playing long before than we are now. You know, I would assume we've been playing a few weeks ago. Um, that's not the case. And as far as moving forward, I don't know. I, I really don't don't know if I see an end to it. I, I hope that there is one. But to be honest, the the cards are are in the owner's hands. You know, we moved a lot, and it's come down to how much are they going to take. And there's not one thing in in a deal in any proposal that they've offered that's that makes us better off. Tomorrow than than we, were, than we were yesterday or that we are today, and uh, you know it's just the amount that the owners are willing to take, and we kind of keep keep taking steps towards them, and uh, you know they're, they're they're standing firm on on, on where they're at and what uh, the owners in the room and, and Gary believe, and it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. I think that uh, you know the, the situation that we're in is. Uh, it's hurting everybody. It's hurting uh, the game um, big time, and uh, and you know nobody's winning at, at this point. And I think we all agree that and agree with that. But the the problem is who's going to take that step? And I think we've tried to make that step and, and tried to come to an agreement as much as possible by at the same time still being fair and still realizing that there is um, that there's things that 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 we want and uh, or, or at least continue to have. And the NHL just seems hell bent on trying to take more and more from us. So it's uh, very frustrating. Uh, but I do hope I hope this report's at least partly accurate that they do have something that to come back with at us with. That definitely be good to see, Brad. I gotta ask you uh, one. There's been uh, not too many people outspoken uh, on the player side about uh, you know basically. Uh, uh, not happy with what's going on with Donald Fear. One of those guys, Roman Hammerlick, uh, was quite vocal last week. Uh, were you surprised that, that Roman uh, said what he said uh, last week? Yeah, I was surprised. I think that uh, the way that or the comments that, that Troy Brower made were dead on. I think that, um, you know, it, it was uh, it was great to, to see that in his response. Um I'm surprised at uh, what he said, but at the same time, you don't really get too surprised when you, you're hearing it from guys like like Troy said in his comments. The guy's never been on a conference call. The guy's never been into any meetings. Um, so from what I understand, the guy doesn't know what's going on, and, and to pipe up that way uh, is is just det- detrimental to, uh, to the process. And I think that... When it comes to this type of negotiations and uh, opinions, you know, guys have their opinions and guys are entitled to them, and, and you know, they can say whatever they want. But if you got an issue, you, you keep it internally and you ask the right questions. You don't go out and kind of run your mouth and uh, make comments that 
you know, that I don't believe are true and that most of the guys don't believe are true. But um, So it's unfortunate that happens, especially from a guy who's played as long as he has and has made as much money as he has um, over the, the course of his career um, because of the way that other guys, what he did in his lockout and, and both guys that did before him and the, what, the way that they helped uh, uh, kind of carve the path that he was able to, to make the money that he is and now he's kind of worried about the $3 million um, to play another year. I think that's that's unfortunate. But, again, I think for us, it's uh, those instances when you've got 700-odd guys, um, those things will happen. And I think so far we've done a great job. The union's done a great job of informing guys and keeping our union very transparent. And anybody needs anything, their phone calls away, guys call back on, calls guys back right away. He flies to see guys if they really want it. Um, if they've got serious questions, um, just the the access is, I've never seen anything like this. And that's why these reports uh, are trying to um, be faced on in any way are, uh, are pretty comical, and I'm sure they're somehow coming from the league in one way or another. Mm. Brad, before we let you go, uh, i got to say I've known you for a long time. Uh, now, uh, I... I I think it's been like uh, seven or eight years I, I've known you now. And I learned something new about you today, and I had no idea uh, about it. Uh, it was brought to my attention that apparently you're a huge Seinfeld fan and can recite lines from Seinfeld. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I am a quite a big fan. I named one of my dogs, um, Newman, huh. and uh, I... Uh, uh, by far my favorite show and I've got some, some I got some buddies too that are big fans so it's easy to kind of keep it up as much as uh, much as I do that's funny you must have been devastated when they went off the air yeah but the syndication is amazing so you still watch it two three times a day yeah, um, that's true box sets like it's I just that, that definitely show I cannot get enough of and even today I was just I saw an episode text my buddy he says like three, four words, and I know exactly what he's talking about, and you know, kind of vice versa. So it uh, that is one one show that I have a decent amount of knowledge in, and like I say, you throw a couple words out, I or at least a couple lines. I should have a pretty good idea what episode they're talking about. That's pretty funny. Yeah, it was a good show. It was one of my favorites as well. Brad, I, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us tonight, buddy. Uh, hopefully, uh, and, and I said this to you before, hopefully we're talking about on ice stuff soon. Uh, and who knows, maybe uh, hopefully that report can be accurate but kind of get done uh, reasonably you know, within the next month. That would, be, that would be great to see you guys back on the ice. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, uh, you know, we're, like I said, trying to be optimistic and, you know, just looking, trying to get as fair a deal as possible. And, you know, we're hoping that uh, things move along quickly. Is you know, I, would, I want to get back on the ice too. You know, you mentioned play for the Islanders. I'd like to, I'd like to actually play a game with the Islanders. Currently, kind of start getting that going soon. So that's true. Like, yeah, but it'd be good to see you on the on the uh, on the top line playing with Tavares. That's for sure. Yeah, that'd be great. So I agree. I want to get this thing done, and I know a lot of guys do. So. Anyways, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, and uh, hopefully, we got some good news in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Well, Brad, thanks so much for doing this, buddy. We'll uh, definitely have you on again soon. Uh, all the best to you, and uh, we'll talk soon, buddy. All right, Josh. You're welcome, man. Thanks, Brad. Take care.